I'm Jonathan Nader from ECR. I'm here at Mad Elevator and I'm going to show you how to install a C-Look cab. These are the crates that we would send your cab in. They're made of 5 8 plywood so that they're very tough. Each crate has an image on the front which shows the contents of the uh, crate and a packing list which itemizes each piece. There's a universal baffle strip that was screwed to the top of one crate. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And there's a Robertson bit that comes with the uh, one crate that you can use to open up your crates in case you don't have one in your kit. Well, I say we open them up and have a look. Let's put this cab together. The first thing we have to do is wipe down the shelf to make sure that there's no debris on the walls because these panels are reversible and we don't want them damaged on the back. So before we install the cab, we're just gonna give a little spray paint four inches down on the panels and on the canopy, just so that it gives a nice finish when we put the top caps and the ceilings in place. This is the front reveal. We have to apply it to the front corners of the cab. First, we're gonna fit it, just to make sure that it's not too long so that when we've applied it from the bottom to the top, we don't end up with a piece that's too long. When we put this vertical reveal in place, we have to start at the bottom and work our way toward the top, making sure it's staying up against the front wall. Now I'm gonna pull the plastic off the reveal. You have to be very careful not to touch the reveal with your bare hands because it'll make your cleanup far easier in the end. This is ECR's hollow vented removable kick plate. It's attached to the shell wall through the vent holes and through these holes that you see on the back of the hollow kick plate. Being hollow makes it light and of course it makes it removable so that if the kick plate's damaged or you need to work on the floor, you can just remove the kick plates without removing the rest of the interior. Let's have a look at the notches on this kick plate. There's one in the very center to indicate where the center of the kick plate is and it goes in the center of the rear wall of the shelf. We also have these groups of three notches. There's one notch that shows the edge of a panel, the other notch shows the edge of the next panel, and the one in the middle shows the center of the reveal. The only measurement you have to take is to find the center of the shelf so that you can line it up with the notch in the rear kick plate. After that, you can throw your tape measure away. You don't need it for the rest of the job. No measuring, no trimming, no gluing. Now it's time to install the side kick plate. Side kick plate is like the rear kick plate in that it is hollow. It has notching systems to show where the panels and the extrusion go. It also has notches on the top side and the bottom side, so in fact it's universal for the left and the right. You can't really mix them up. Finally, make sure that the cap is at the front of the cap. Now it's time to put in the uh, corner reveals. So you'll notice a couple of things on this. One, there's double back tape on one side, but not the other. That's because when you go to install it, you slide the uh, reveal against the shell wall and then you slide it into place so that it sits squarely into the corner. Now it's time to install the panels below the handrail. In order to do that, you need the patented ECR C-Look extrusion. You'll note that the holes are all pre-drilled and that there's a large hole on one side of the extrusion. The large hole has to go on the top because you'll use it to install the handrail panel later. This is the C-Look panel. You'll notice that the same plastic laminate is on the front side as it is on the back side. This is why these panels are reversible. Have a look at these labels that are put on each panel. You'll see that this one says this is for car one, rear wall, first panel. These labels can be removed afterward and they line up with the drawings that were given. So you see I put the panel on the shell wall and it lines up with the one side of the three notches that I showed you before. Now it's time to put in the rear center panel and it's as easy as lining it up with the notch on this side and on that side.
Now we're going to install the sidewall panels. We'll start with the rear corner, then we'll do the one in the front. But we're only going to install the extrusions for the corner and the middle. We'll deal with the front later. Now we're going to install the handrail panels. You'll see that the handrail panels have these handy dandy notches right here. And we put those notches uh, right behind the extrusions and you see them through those big holes that I was asking you to ensure were at the top. First we'll start with the rear handrail panel. Now we're going to put on the side handrail panel. It's the same as the rear wall except it has one cap on the end. The cap has to go out toward the front. Now we're going to put in all the upper panels. It's the same thing as the lower panels. Now we're going to install the rear wall panels. We'll start with the corners and the mirror will do last because it requires special handling. Okay, now it's time to install this mirror. So a couple of the key features of this mirror is there's uh, the edge at the top and bottom which are visible like you see on the panels and they're marked with black in behind. The sides have wood over them, but they'll be covered by the extrusion, so that's fine. Now, when we put this mirror on the wall, it is very important that we put it flat on the wall and then slide it down instead of putting it on the wall on an angle and pushing into place. If you do that, you'll crack the mirror and then you'll have to buy a new one from me. This is the raised front reveal. It goes along the leading edge of the panels and its purpose is to put the extrusion on the same level as the panels themselves. All you do is you line it up with the notches like everything else in the system. And now because we're going to put the extrusion on, we're going to peel off the plastic protective film. And now the extrusion. Now we have to install the handrails, but first we have to remove the plastic from the handrail panel. So our handrails are installed from inside the cab and it's done with a split standoff. This side of the standoff is attached to the shell wall and we use togglers which I'll show you in a moment. The interesting thing about a toggler is it can be wide in the back when you need to attach your bolt, but it can also be narrow when you need to put it through the hole. Once you put it into the hole, you move it even like that and you slide this down into place which locks it in and then you snap off the white pieces and you have an attachment through the wall in behind the cam. You can now bolt your standoffs to the toggler. Now we're going to drill the holes into the handrail panels. We do this in three steps, quarter inch, three eighths and half inch. The reason we do that is because we're drilling through the panel and then through a steel shell and that can cause a lot of torque on your wrist and hurt you. If you use three steps, you'll be fine. So now it's time to install the wall side of the standoffs. We use a quarter 20 bolt that has a lock washer close to the head and a full size washer below that. We always want to make sure that we install the set screw at the bottom because people won't want to look at that. Let's put it on the wall. Okay. 
Now the fun part's coming up. When you install these standoffs on the wall, you never get them in the right place in the first place, so you gotta knock them around a little bit with a rubber hammer so that you can put your handrails in. So this is a glass reinforced polycarbonate screw cap inlay. It's made of the same material that they use to make hockey masks. So it's pretty tough. It's pretty much the only thing we Canadians think about. All right, so now we have all the screw cap inlays installed. We're gonna peel off the remainder of the plastic and the cab will be done. This brings us to the end of our Sea Look installation video. We hope you enjoyed it. And we look forward to seeing you next time.